Welcome to the most epic adventures. Tonight we are having the most epic interview with Julie and Yannick from Gone in April. Let's uh, let's get these guys on the screen. Hey guys, welcome hey to the show. How are you? Thanks for I'm, having us. I'm very well. Thank you for uh, being on the show. I really appreciate it. So um, I saw you guys when you toured with. Corp Lacani and Ellie Wetty. Am I saying that right? People always argue about how to say their name. <laughs> yeah, I think I think everybody has their own way of saying it. We're we're French Canadians, so we probably pronounce it too French, you know. So, <laughs> like, uh, I think it's Elvetti. Elvetti and, and, yeah, and, and Corpiclani. Yeah, Corpiclani. Yeah, I don't think we pronounce that one right. Anyway, no. that it's, one's you, not you, very French so, when we say you, it. You, you know, it's it's funny. Like you guys went on tour with them, and you still can't figure out how to say the oh, name. Oh well, <laughs> yeah, you don't really talk about the band name, you know. <laughs> well, I think when when we pronounce the band names, I think it's obvious that we're French Canadians, yeah. right? So we'll say Iduvetti instead of Eluvetti or something. You know, it's like it's just pronounced really differently when we say. And the cool thing is that there's really people from everywhere. Like you have people from every country, you know, on the tour and then uh, yeah. even within the same team. So then, you know, there's so many accents that it's just a funny thing and it's nobody really cares. <laughs> so well, well, I that's, guess that's why. <laughs> that's, that's the great thing about uh, the world metal scene, right? Right. Diversity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I remember seeing you guys, and uh, I was thinking, man, th this is – it was just a unique show for me um, because I, I I like all kinds of metal. I went to Vakken last year and w was able to see some amazing bands that never get to play in the United States on like – and I saw Eluvete El or Eluvete or however you say it in front of like, you know, 60,000 people, and then to see them at, at a smaller venue – in my hometown and they put on the same great show with, with you joining them. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. That's true. When, uh, yeah. In, in Houston, right? Yep. In Houston. Yeah. So it was, yeah. In Houston, I, uh, I was, uh, playing with them. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was just, uh, that was just a one night thing. No, actually I think it was eight shows if I remember well. So okay. it was uh, a little bit over a week. Yeah. So it was awesome. So, so you, you guys opened up that show. I mean, um, Corporal Connie, I, I guess I'm just saying it like a Texan. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. Corporal Connie and El um were co-headliners. They both played for like an hour and a half. And you played, gone in April, you guys played for what, about half an hour? Maybe? Yeah, about yeah. that. It was 30, 35 minutes. Yeah, something 30, like that. 30, 35 minutes. Yeah. So you ended up playing like for two hours. <laughs> Each well, night. you know, it's very nice of you to actually think about it. <laughs> it is exhausting, uh, I will say. Um, it, it is very long, uh, a set, when you think about it. But the cool thing is, uh, because Elvici was, the, um, last was band. the last band, mm -hmm. I had like an hour and a half in between to, right. well, to be honest, because I had so much material, what I was doing is I was going off stage to just go through all the Elvici stuff so I would take my mind off the gone in April, but at least I had time to put it in my fingers and then go back on the stage. So, and, and just breathe a little bit, but yeah, it was intense, but it was, it was really, a, it was amazing. So, so, so that's, I, I saw you guys play. I thought you guys were great. I thought you were spectacular, able to, to, to sing, do like opera singing, play the violin and viola. And then, uh, and then you have a death metal vocalist with your band. So it's like a mixture of symphonic and death metal. Um, Yannick, you're kicking it with the double bass drum. Just just insane. And then it was just a it was just a really unique, unique night. Do you know in Houston that night there was that show that you guys played? Um, south of Houston there was um, um, Ginger was playing. Oh yeah. North of north of Houston, yeah. Iron Maiden was playing. Oh really? In downtown Houston, Black Label Society with Black Dahlia Murder were playing all the same night. That is crazy. I know one of our guys on our team mentioned that because he said, "I want to go see the, you know, Ginger. Ginger. I want to oh, yeah, go yeah. see Iron Maiden." It's like, no, we need you tonight. You have to stay here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I feel like that's gonna be every night in 2021. Like, 
because Probably. every show is reported, you know, uh, not reported. That's not the right Canceled. word. No, but move, rescheduled. <laughs> move, you rescheduled. Thanks. Um, so every show is moved to 2021 almost. So like you're gonna have so many shows at the same time. So you, everybody will have to pick from the menu, you know. So <laughs> it's gonna be insane. Hopefully, hopefully that's true. Hopefully that's the case. Um, it's, you know, I know Vakin is doing their their worldwide concert. Um, they decided. I guess they're gonna be doing some live streaming coming up. So that'll be cool. I haven't been following so much, yeah, about yeah. what they're gonna do. So they're they're doing like a live stream. Yeah, something like that. Um, they're even selling patches and and wristbands and everything. Well, that's so, cool. Because people, you know, like I was gonna go again this year, and uh, people like to collect those things for each year, you know. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay, yeah, 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 I totally. And get so it. so they're like, well, we're gonna do a virtual festival, all online the same dates that they would have normally had the festival this year. So well, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think so it's we'll good see. to kind of keep it going without interrupting a year in that. It just kind yeah. of, uh, uh, you know, keeps it there. Yeah. <laughs> well, for the so, fans too, it's so, so depressing to just see everything being canceled. So have you guys, have you guys had a chance to play any of those European festivals yourself? Not no. the European ones, no, not yet. We played an, we Asian, <laughs> an Asian festival in Bangalore, India back in 2012. Uh, it was the Great Indian Oktoberfest, so, but we have not been to Europe yet, so we look forward to it. Yeah. Well, tell me about that. That sounds cool. Oh, that, yeah, that was, uh, that was kind of interesting. The way that happened is I had um, a message in my, uh, it's just kind of weird sometimes how stuff happens, you know. So I get a message in my uh, Facebook, you know, uh, uh, messenger. And uh, it was someone in, in Bangalore that said, hey, it'd be really cool if you guys uh, came to India one day for a show. And instead of just telling him, yeah, we'd love to as well. We hope to see you one day. Send. And that was it. I mean, I told him that. But I said, do you know any promoters in the area that can? And he said, you know what? Let me check on that. And needless to say, like two weeks later, he said, I actually got in touch with someone and uh, let me see what we can do. And maybe this, uh, you know, I can try to get you guys on. And believe it or not, it actually happened. Wow. And we were still in touch with him now in 2000, you know, since 2012. And he's working on getting us, uh, you know, to go back to, to India as well. So, yeah, it was just I, it started off of being a fan that contacted me and turned into us going halfway across the world to uh, to do a concert in the festival. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> What was what was the festival like? The oh, it was uh, it was a mix of metal and rock, and of course they had like uh, Indian music as well. So uh, the uh, I guess the metal headliners or the metal yeah I guess the metal headliners was uh, Gone in April and uh, Children of uh, Bodom, okay. and uh, of course they had other uh, you know opening acts that were local to uh, uh, mm -hmm. to um, uh, Bangalore. I think there was a band from England as well, but I mean. The two uh, metal headliners were, were us and uh, Children of Bodom. So yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, have you guys played many shows with Children Children of Bodom before? No, that was just no. the, the the one show that we did with yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. I mean, it's it's amazing. Like the metal is worldwide, and um, well, I saw you guys. I saw you guys, and then Julie, I think you posted like a video or something like on the world metal scene group. And um, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember seeing seeing you guys. You guys were great. And then, you know, I added you and I've been trying to get an interview interview with you guys for a while. So thank you for uh, I guess I guess because of covid, you guys are just chilling at home now. So there's plenty yeah. of time. Yeah. 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 Well, like everybody. But uh, I think it's, it's really cool because, yeah, um, when when we, we reconnected on, on that post, it was like, hey, yeah, like. Where have we been like for the last one? So that was really cool, actually, because you had talked to me about your, um, your, um, if, if not episodes, but broadcast and the most epic adventures. And I, yeah. I was really interested by the whole concept. That was so, I'm super glad that you, that we found each other again. And I've been, well, you know, I've been looking at your unboxing and, uh, <laughs> and I just watched also the interview with the priest of, I'm going to say that wrong, Hiroshima. Um, yeah. So, and I really, really enjoyed that interview. Actually, I thought it was it was super good. And um, well, thank you. Really, really liked how you approached uh, a lot of the questions that are quite critical in there. So, um, 
but yeah so just watching and also seeing your the burger joints how you encourage like the local you know places and uh, let them talk to you about where, yeah that was really cool i love i love it i think it's uh, super nice how you give um you give some light on all those uh those subjects subjects yeah. yeah i don't know where my english is today i'm so sorry no, it's fine it's fine <laughs> <It's> french <laughs> it's just, i don't speak french. Oh, french that's what covid did to yes, me yes. like we we I know, I know, I know some some French words. Um, I probably speak more French than most people in England. They won't say anything like they won't say fillet. They say fillet, you know. And they don't call oh, really? it like they don't call it a resume. They call it a, a CV. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. yeah. They, they're just they're very anti-French there. I don't understand it. Oh, you know, long, long animosities. I guess between France <laughs> and England. <laughs> If you look at old history, I don't know, <laughs> making this up, but I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think, I didn't know it was like this. So we'll have to go there and just barge with some French and make them say a few words. <laughs> but I mean, as French Canadians, it's probably, you know, probably everyone just loves each other, right? In Canada. Loves what? <laughs> Everybody just loves each other, right? The, the French speakers and the English speakers. Yeah, yeah. There, there may be some division between the French <laughs> and the English, but uh, yeah, I guess that depends on the uh, the alliance to which um, you know, uh, not organization, but to which uh, party or which side, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying not to play too much into this. So. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, it's just side. Yeah, no, it's just, sorry. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, that, that has to play into your music some, right? Uh, well, like your your own experiences in life. Yeah. Well, you know, I think for us, it's it, it, because it's part of our, you know, where you're from is part of who you are. It's part of what you grew up with. So it's when you write music in some ways, it's also part of your sources, you know. So. Um, we we do have quite a lot of um like I guess folk music yeah well you culture. know like mm -hmm. even through through songs that you would not uh, say that they're folk at all you will have some little folk riffs here and there at least on the violin you know yeah. um so that are that are very inspired but by, by what yeah we grew up with or we heard a lot so so yeah i think yes it does play um and I like to put one song in French per album, uh, just so you know we stay true to to our who roots. we are, yeah, to our roots. And I think it's super important that the albums be accessible to a, a, um, as many people as possible. So it's it's one of the big reasons also why we we sing in English, and it's a beautiful language as well. Um, but it's fun as well to just plug one of our you know a song that will be in French and then. Um, does, well, does, it, does that help with like Quebecois radio to put to have a French speak a French song? Usually, I think the French songs are the ballads or the yeah. slower songs, so I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, not really I radio don't know friendly. If they play that That's as much fault. on metal uh, <laughs> on metal radio, but no, I, actually there are there are metal stations that um, actually talk quite a bit about those songs just because they're so different. Uh, I guess just because of I guess Julie's background and the fact that's in French and her classical background also in folk background. So you blend all of those together that it gives kind of like a different flavor. And of course it's from a metal band. So you got a different flavor there. So yeah, they yeah. actually, they enjoy playing those songs too on metal radio. So, yeah. yeah. So, so who came up with the idea to like, let's, let's have a death metal ba band, but throw in some, some opera singing and some symphonic uh, violin playing and mix it up there. Yeah, so I, I guess it it may root back to the start of the band, but I think a lot of that has to do with our backgrounds, right? So when uh, the band started, the original guitarist, his name is Felix, um, he's uh, from Germany, and uh, I had done two kind of really death metal albums with him uh, before, and uh, it was only death metal, and he wanted to do a different album, and he said, I want you on drums, and uh, when I heard the music, I thought, hey, it'd be kind of cool to get some clean singing on this, not just death vocals. And then Julie, you know, did some some examples, you know, of how that might sound. And then it's like, all right, let's let's do it. So then that kind of aspect kind of brought, you know, got brought into the, uh, you know, the, the music of Gone in April. Yeah. 
but I think also there, there's also the flavor of, I have more of a death metal background. Um, and uh, so I kind of bring maybe that aspect a little bit more in to the, the, the music and Julie will bring in the kind of opera and kind of clean classical, sing, you know, yeah. classical and that. So it, it, I guess it, it all kind of <laughs> depends on the, like the music I grew up with was more like thrash metal and death metal and that a lot more death metal and Julie, not so much. So yeah, it's just, you blend the styles together and it kind of gives what, how it sounds. You, you know? know, my first, my first thought when you said, how does it happen? And I, I was just thinking like, it did just happen. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think, no. I think we, the thing with Gone in April is that we are a bunch of musicians from all sorts of, um, not I want to I won't say fields but like styles different styles and but we all have a tremendous respect for the qualities of the others and we all love what the others are doing so you know when you you just want to you just want to play with people that you really respect you really like their music so you put everything together and that's what it gives I think that's that's pretty much it you know so um of course, uh, we we have to harness it a little bit so it doesn't go completely like, you know, like yeah. songs that are so different from each other than that right. you feel like you're listening to two two different CDs. But um, yeah, but we we do we do have like to have the liberty to mix it up and and create something out of all of these uh, influences. And so what? Tell tell me about the uh, the other members of your band that aren't with you. So 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 Julie, you sing and play uh, stringed instruments. Mm -hmm. Yannick, you play drums. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have uh, um, I guess the guitarist. There's uh, Mark uh, Andre. Um, I've been working with Mark in kind of like in music since uh, 2005, I think. So it's been a while. Like him and I have been working together for a very long time. Uh, when we started doing concerts for uh, our second album, Threads of Existence, back in uh, 2016, uh, we brought in uh, Simon as the second uh, guitarist. Mm -hmm. uh, so Simon's been with us for about four years now, and he actually did the uh, the tour as well with Edouvetsi uh, in Corpiclani. <laughs> 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 uh, so uh, Mark has... Um, uh, I guess, I mean, he's got a tremendous amount of experience with metal and all of our guys do, yeah. but Mark's, uh, I guess, influences and, uh, and interests are very much in uh, jazz and improv and stuff and like fusion. that. So, and fusion. So he kind of brings that kind of aspect um, uh, or that style or flavor, uh, you know, of metal that kind of brings that. Uh, I don't know. Are you familiar with the band Cynic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cynic. Okay. So. Yeah. Kind of, it, it's like, you know, he kind of tends to gravitate more towards those kinds of like chord progressions and, and things like that. Uh, Simon is a little bit more um, kind of rock, I guess, yeah, uh, kind of rock. So he kind of brings in a kind of uh, slightly different uh, flavor. Uh, Steve, uh, our bassist, um, uh, geez, uh, the first time I worked with him actually was in 2004 uh, on a death metal album. So him and I go way back. I think we've done five or six albums now together or something like that. So, um, And Steve uh, plays fretless bass. So already the, the tone of a fretless bass is completely different than a, fret, a fretted bass. And, and of course, the way you play it and the way you compose with it is completely different. Um, and he's, I mean, his... Uh, bass playing and composition. I mean, just everything is just, you know, phenomenal. So, and of course he's got a tremendous amount of experience in death metal, uh, but he likes, um, uh, I don't know, the kind of Viking uh, culture and I guess, mm -hmm. you know, the style of music that uh, he's very open and listens yeah. to a lot of oh, different styles of music also. So again, when he approaches uh, songwriting, he doesn't come in with like, uh, uh, this is, you know, a death metal melodic, uh, you know, classical band. So yeah. I'm going to write that way. He just, just like Mark, just writes what feels, what what they feel that the song needs, kind of thing, you know. And yeah. of course, usually it comes out sounding metal, but we we don't really kind of put boxes around it, you know. Um, and Aaron, we've been with uh, Aaron in uh, since for two albums now, since uh, about 2015. Uh, which is kind of interesting how we met is that um, we own a, a recording studio and there's Aaron's band that actually came into our recording studio to record. 
And when I heard his voice the first time, I felt like, wow, man, this is yeah, it was this huge. is really, was really, really cool. cool. And uh, of course, we wanted to incorporate more death vocals uh, at the start of the second album. So we asked him if he wanted to be a part of it. And he's been, you know, with us uh, ever since in that. So and uh, yeah, Aaron listens to a lot of different styles of music also. I think yeah. uh, maybe more modern uh, metal, I think that he uh, listens to, but he listens to a whole bunch of uh, different things too. So. Yeah, I could not even yeah. pinpoint because he's coming with different things all the time. Yeah. So. so, but I mean, Julie, uh, I think for, for you, I mean, you like a, a lot of the female fronted, I guess, and maybe the, uh, like, well, Camelot, stuff like that also. When yeah, for me, for me, it's melodies. Uh, I mean, if it has a melody, it doesn't necessarily need to have the vocals, you know, but I like a good melody. So I want, and, and a melody um, also that is a little, uh, you know, you have like short melodies that repeat, but you have the ones that are more, a little bit more sustained. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm a little bit more in the lyrical, like long melodies things, so more sustained. So I guess it goes, as Yannick was saying, with the classical background, um, since that's what I started on in classical and folk. Um, but I mean, when I discovered metal, that was it. So. <laughs> I, and I bring more of the death metal. Like I grew up listening to, uh, you know, things like uh, Death. I don't know if you're familiar with the band uh, oh. uh, Death. That actually, coincidentally, Steve did two albums with Death. So it's right. really cool to kind of have him, uh, was, you know, be part of our team. <laughs> I, I was going to ask about that. Yeah. So he he played with Death, and he's been playing with Testament too, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, those are those are huge huge bands. Yeah. Man. So Steve has played on, I guess, two of my favorite albums of all time, which is still, uh, you know, kind of pretty cool to have him, uh, you know, be a part of our team in that. But uh, awesome. you know, yeah. So I kind of have that flavor of like, you know, death, and I listen to, I guess, back when I was growing up in high school, like uh, Deicide and uh, Slayer, and you know, just a lot of like. What about uh, what? What I think of death metal from Quebec, I think Gore Guts. Yeah, Gorguts. Yeah, um, I don't know as much about Gorguts because I guess um, uh, back then it was more. I guess uh, you know. I mean, back then the the web wasn't what it is now, and uh -huh. uh, you know, it's like when you get a metal magazine at the uh, you know gas station or whatever, you would see the majority of the bands that were uh, you know a lot of the Bay Area, the California bands, yeah. and the Florida uh, you know death metal bands. Uh, and that and uh, Cannibal Corpse, Deicide, you know, and a, a lot of uh, those bands and thrash metal from, uh, you know, California. So I kind of was more familiar with those because back then, I mean, what you read in those magazines, the hard copy magazines, they weren't webzines at the time, you know. I mean, yeah. it was those bands. So I'm more familiar with those. Yeah. So you're so you're listening to the uh, Tampa death metal and the Bay Area thrash metal. Yep. Yep. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And see, my first concert was Ed Guy, so you can see the difference right there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why Gone in April sounds the way it does. No, that's awesome. That's yeah. that's really cool. Um, there's a there's a local there's a local singer here. She's like a pop singer, and she did a, a collaboration with a like rap a local rap metal band, and uh, it's pretty cool. It's cool stuff. I'm, I'm, I might have her on soon as well. But right. but I think there's there's plenty of room for different vocal styles in metal. You know, that's the one thing about metal is like, you know, th people here is just metal. They're just like, okay, it's metal. But there's so many subgenres. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very yeah. vast, and there's a lot of flexibility. And I think people are very open to that. Uh, you know, usually, and you you can cover a lot of ground in metal. You know, I mean that that I think is a very interesting aspect of that style of music. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What, so, so what have you guys been doing uh, during this like lockdown pandemic and everything? Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are in, you guys are in Knoxville right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're in Knoxville. Um, we've been keeping very busy actually with uh, you know, playthrough videos. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, we're about to release a bass playthrough uh, Saturday for uh, the song Empire of Loss. Um, we had Julie uh, that released a, a violin playthrough. I mean, we have basically a, a, a lot of playthrough videos that are being worked on right now on live videos as well. Uh, yep, that's the uh, our uh, our website. Yeah, the website here. I don't think we, we put the yeah. playthroughs. Uh, there's a playthrough at the bottom there for us. Hope that's on it. But yeah, I mean, we have drum playthroughs that are getting worked on, uh, bass playthroughs, guitar playthroughs. 
uh, uh, on and on. So, I mean, there's a lot of videos that are in the works right now, plus live video since we recorded the, um, uh, yeah, that's uh, the, as Hope Welcomes Death, either, uh, yeah, that was this one is, of the playthroughs. So, that, uh, so, so, on, so on the left is the actual music video. Yeah, right. the reason then, we have the music video in this is because there's a long intro and we thought, well, let's just show the uh, official music video. But once, uh, you know, the instrument starts, then it focuses on that uh, on that instrument. So and, and and I wish I could play the music, but I would get a copyright strike from YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of it's kind of killer. But but we can see you. We can see you drumming here. This is this is great. We can see your your technique. Yeah, we, we like... Um, Got your Doc Martens and, there. Yeah, we, we like working on playthrough videos because I think we have a really good team of musicians uh, in, in Gone in April, and they do really impressive stuff on their on, on their instruments, you know, and we really want to, you know, highlight that. And, and a lot of the people are interested to kind of look yeah. at the detail yeah. and see how those parts are played. Um, so that's why we like working on those and releasing those um, as uh, you know extra videos uh, for for fans to see and musicians to see as well. So and the the, the singer was screaming at you, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's he's, he's, like, he's like, play harder, play harder. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that the, Aaron and I started doing that several years ago because uh, on Threads I wrote the majority of the lyrics, and I think on Shards, Julie and I have about split it fifty yeah. fifty. Okay. But because I, I wrote the you know a lot of the lyrics, I know them, and I enjoy singing them as I'm playing drums, you know, either at concerts okay. or during videos. And when Aaron notices that, he looks at me sometimes, and we look at each other, and we just go, ah, you know. Well, so, yeah, it's I mean, how? how? <laughs> That's my violinist slash singer mind. How? Like, you're already using your four limbs. How yeah. can you, on top of that, think of words? I, <laughs> right, I, right. I'd be like, left, right, Any, anyway. There's a reason I'm doing what I'm doing because <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. Like, like even you know people who sing and play guitar or bass guitar at the it's same hard. time. Like yeah. it's yeah, it's yeah, insane. I think, I think that's hard. Yeah. I tried it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna play and sing at the same time, and Lynn is like, ooh, <laughs> split the brain in two. You know, <laughs> you know it, it's funny. In 1993, I think the first, uh, I think one of the first bands I've ever played with. I had I, I played a little bit of acoustic guitar, um, you know, back then, not as much anymore. But anyways, there was a, a riff that I thought, oh, it'd be cool to have this riff in, in the song. And I wrote the vocal pattern for it. And I, you know, t told the, the, the guitarist and vocalist how it went. And he said, Yannick, I, you cannot sing this vocal pattern and play that guitar riff at the same time. And I said, would you please practice it? Maybe you'll be able to get it. And he's like, no, it's impossible. I've worked on this and that. <laughs> And after like a week of him complaining about it, at one point I'm on the phone with him. So I have the phone on my shoulder and I have the acoustic guitar and said, well, let me just try this. I've never tried it because maybe it is super hard, right? Because I wrote the vocal part differently, like at different times than, and I wasn't playing both at the same time. So I had the phone on and I took the acoustic guitar and I played the guitar part and sang the lyrics. And I said, well, there, that wasn't so hard. He's like, Okay, all right, let me try it again. And he hung up and that was it. So I think it's a different type of brain. Uh, I really do think it is. Uh, so but but it's fun. I enjoy singing the lyrics and interacting with Aaron too because it gives the kind of musician musician interaction on stage in that, you know, and I think it's something that the fans enjoy seeing also, you know, that the, the musicians enjoy being on the same stage uh, together and Aaron's a really cool guy and we get along really well and it's just fun to kind of when we're playing to look at each other and just kind of yell and be like, ah, you know, so it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. As someone in the audience, when you guys are up there having fun, it definitely, it definitely shows through and it, uh, it, it, it makes it entertaining for me in the crowd to see that, you know? Cool. So yeah, we, I think we have fun on stage. I mean, we, we enjoy the, the music and, uh, you know, the guys have a good time on it, you know? I mean, for us, it's, it's very important to play the material well yeah. and to have a, a good performance. It's a long um, song, man. <laughs> so it's a long song. You just- Yeah, that's a seven minute uh, song, <laughs> that one. Uh, something, or maybe se almost seven minutes, yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean, for us, it, it's very important that we play the material well, um, you know, but another aspect that's very important to us is to have fun 
And I know when I play drums, I, I always improvise the fills a little bit. I mean, the drums are 95% what they are on the album when I play live, but I like to improvise and have fun and interact with the other musicians. And I think the guys in front also are very excited and enjoy doing that. So yeah, it, it, it makes for an interesting and fun uh, live performance. Yeah. Now, this was shot really, really well. Where was this shot? It was like in a castle or something, huh? Uh, yeah, that's a, a venue in South Carolina. It was called the Old Cigar Warehouse. Oh. And um, it's kind of <laughs> strange because it does look like a dungeon, but they're actually using that venue for corporate events and for weddings. And um, yeah, it's it's got, um, it, it was like this old cigar warehouse back in the day. Um, I don't know exactly when it was built, but you see with the brick, uh, the you know, the brick walls that it's, yeah. it's a very old building. This is not from like last year. And right. of course we had uh, aerial uh, silk dancers coming from the ceiling that were, uh, you know, doing twists and turns and stuff like that in the Which, video. Yeah, so in the original video. Like in the original was, video, not in the playthrough. We didn't bring them in that. the playthrough. <laughs> Above Yannick <laughs> said. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that venue was, it was work to, to uh, you know, a bit more work to do the video there as opposed to another video because we had to check the, the low bearing capacities of the, um, yeah. of the ceiling and the beams to see if they could actually hold you know, like uh, a person kind of like uh, not tumbling, but like twisting and like coming down and hitting and doing yeah, quickly, these twists yeah. and turns and stuff like that. So that video was, uh, was you know, you had to look at the structural integrity and uh, look at the low bearing capacities and that. So that video was, uh, yeah, it was quite something to shoot that at that venue. Yeah. Yeah. I think we did everything in what, an evening and a night. Yeah, it was done in I think yeah about twelve hours, except the intro with the uh, with the war kind of footage that yeah, was yeah. done on a different That's day. It. But at the actual venue, that was done in twelve hours. Yeah. Well, I got to So you pro you have promotion. You have pictures on your website too, and I got to ask about these. Your promotion. You're in a you're in like a freaking cave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that 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 video has not been released yet. Okay. But so we won't comment too much on it. But what we did do is so we recorded uh, three videos and that last one just has not been released yet. But what we've done is when we were working on the uh, uh, the graphic uh, artwork for the um, uh, for the uh, the CD for the album, we had promotional shots at, in that venue and in two other venues. And we said we're going to incorporate them in the uh, album artwork because they're really cool venues. So even though we have not um, released that video yet, the photos from it are uh, available. So, uh, yeah. And you're the only person who actually spotted this. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty impressive. <laughs> and, then, and then here we get Steve with his six string fretless bass and a waterfall. Yep. yep. These are just, uh, <laughs> these are just, these are epic, man. These are most epic. Most epic well, pictures. Well, and look at you, look at you, Julie, in the film. game. You, you look like a freaking superhero with your blue hair and your, 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 I don't even know, the sleeves, your sleeves on your shirt there. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to conquer the world we, we <laughs> one cave lot, at a time. <laughs> yeah, we put a lot of time in finding good spots for, uh, for videos. And what I mean by a lot of time, we, we do a lot of research months and months ahead of time to an old, uh, old church yeah, yeah that was really, um yeah. an old church uh in um in detroit. detroit and actually coincidentally one of the transformers movie was recorded in that church a part of it and i haven't watched any of those pieces of shit <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah that that old church that church was built i think was it uh, either wow, in the 1920s or 30s or anyway something like that and it's been abandoned and foreclosed and uh, uh you know was uh, available for for purchase and yeah that's it right there i mean i, I absolutely when when we saw that place i absolutely wanted to do a, a video there so we got in contact we actually found the people that owned it and were able to uh to record there and of well, course, that's that, that that's um that's important that, that's something that that some people uh don't realize that you actually need permission to go into these places <laughs> yeah yeah, so. yeah especially with with all the equipment that's necessary to film you know a good right. a good video yeah, i mean if right. we get there with the the two vans and all of those stuff and try just to yeah yeah, yeah it's a big deal 
And so, so does does uh, Josh Winstead do a lot of your photography and video stuff? Yes, yes, actually, a lot of our, our photography. So uh, we know Josh uh, from Summoner Circle. I'm wearing I'm wearing a shirt. I don't know if you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I can't remember which year. Um, actually, Josh, we started working with Josh as a photographer when we shot uh, our one of our first videos, the waterfall video, actually. Yeah. The photographer that uh, came with us to the uh, uh, the the, um, the venue for uh, As Hope Welcomes Death in South Carolina, the one that you had talked about, that, that you said it looks like this castle or dungeon or something like that, um, our usual photographer came and then uh, he got injured and wasn't able to come to the the next you know video footage uh, video recording which is which was at the waterfall so i called josh and i said how soon can you be here and he's like i'm jumping in the shower i'm leaving in 15 minutes and then since then for i think the past five yes. videos that we've shot i mean he's been there taking photos and traveling with us so yeah, yeah all the way great. to detroit you know from yeah. tennessee to yeah. <laughs> so there and and I actually, he shot some, he shot one of our shows, I think it was even like in 2013. Oh, with the, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think he, he had yeah. shot some really good shots and then he had sent them over and I was like, wow. Yeah. And even my other band that is not very active right now, <laughs> but he, he had shot us there. So it's been, it's been a while. Yeah. So he, he does amazing work and he's really, really a pleasure to be around. So, so here's. So I'm showing the Empire of Lost video from the mm -hmm. church, and uh, you guys look cold as hell. <laughs> yeah, it was it was about, uh, and believe it or not, that we, we got somewhat lucky and somewhat unlucky. So it was unlucky because there was a cold spell uh, going on during that time. It was January in Detroit, and it was uh, about minus 15 Celsius in the church in there. It was when, freaking cold. When was that? When was that? When did when you what? When did you film this? It was January 2019. So what what happened is, yeah. I, okay, I went to Iceland and I had a layover in Detroit, and uh, yeah, it was minus nine Fahrenheit. So I guess that's I don't know what Celsius. I'm I'm sorry, but that is the I had to. We were going from the international terminal to the uh, domestic terminal. We had to go outside and wait for a bus, and yeah. I was just wearing like a hoodie. <laughs> And it was negative nine degrees. I'm I'm from Texas. It doesn't get. <laughs> I've never yeah. felt like even in Iceland it wasn't that cold. So like, <laughs> yeah. so I, that's, I a, think, that's amazing. Yeah, I was there the same time you guys were filming this. Yeah, that was ridiculously cold. Yeah, it was cold. So we we were I guess a little bit unlucky because it was colder than usual. But at the same time, if we would have been there just a few days before, it would have been even worse. So that's why I kind of said we sort of got lucky. Uh, but uh, because when a few days before we shot or a few days after we shot in Knoxville, which is in, in Tennessee, and it was close to the same temperature in Knoxville as it was a week earlier in Detroit. So imagine how cold it was in Detroit at that point. So uh, but what was tricky with that church in particular is it was that it was very humid. Right. Because, I mean, the type of uh, construction and there's no HVAC, there's no. Uh, no, power. Yeah. There's no uh, plumbing, right? So we had the porta potty outside. Of course, we had the security guards outside because uh, it's uh, can be maybe of a tricky uh, uh, area, uh, you know. Um, but yeah, we had propane heaters that were running not stop. So for us to kind of get close to get warmed up uh, before, um, you know, continuing on with the video footage. And uh, yeah, it being cold, we didn't know how. <laughs> the technology was going to react yeah. also, right? So how are the cameras going to react to that cold and the lights? The batteries and all that? were so, going really fast. Yeah, the it, it, it was yeah. a lot of preparation and planning to do that video. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the cold, cold, extreme temperatures in either direction really, really messes with electronics without yeah. doubt. Yeah. But I got to say, man, your your videos are beautiful. You guys find great settings. Um, you guys have some great camera work. I mean. The music is awesome too. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, we had the chance to work with really, really a, um, a very good videographer as well. So that's that's a, a very big plus. So yeah, it's funny. We recorded a, a video um, in 2015 at the time that we were recording the Threads album, and we, the, our goal at the time was to release that video around the same time the vid the album was released, and we just didn't have time to to do that. 
And we said, you know what, we'll just sit on the video a little bit and we'll keep doing our thing and we'll just sit on, on it. And we hadn't really found the person to do the editing yet. I mean, we, we'd found the person to record it, but we didn't find the person right away that uh, we wanted to edit the video. And uh, at one point, Julie was online and played a video of uh, a metal band in Norway. And uh, we sat down and watched it and we thought this video is beautifully edited and the color i mean it was just absolutely it was amazing. like poetry you know like visual yeah. poetry, so. right and um we you know julie did research and found who it was and of course it was uh thomas um Mordvai. from uh shady shades in norway so we got in contact with him and we said hey would you be interested in editing our video and, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. I'm noticing as I'm speaking that, you know, we had like these people that we've never known before. We talk on Facebook Messenger and then all of a sudden all these amazing things, you know, come come together. So that was kind of the same thing with Thomas is that we sent him the uh, the video footage by mail on a hard drive and he did the editing. And it, it didn't come out in in, I guess, the same way that his other videos had come out and then we noticed like wow there's there's really a magic that happens when he films and edits and and his uh, the way he films the, it's very dynamic so he moves with you can uh -huh. see if you watch yeah. the video there's always movement in the camera it's not right. just like a tripod or and uh -huh. he really gets into the action and he's not afraid to get close and that makes for very dynamics and that you know videos with a lot of life and at one point, I remember we had a discussion with him on Skype and said, hey, we understand that you had to work with the footage that was given to you, but how do you feel if we just scrap that and you come here and we completely re-record everything, you re-record it and you edit it? And then he was like, oh my gosh, that would be so amazing. And then when we started discussing that, we said, well, if, we, if he's going to come from all the way over there, for, you know, it's not just going to be for one video, right? So we right, said, okay, right. well, what if we do three? So we ended up doing three videos. And uh, of course, we had other bands from our recording studio that kind of jumped in on that too. And we said, all right, we're going to get Thomas to be here for uh, a little bit more time and, and uh, you know, record footage for not just Gone in April, but other bands from the studio. And, uh, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, and he came back in 2019 and that's where we did some more uh, video recording. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's really cool to work with them. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm, that, that, oh man, I'm hearing like a, an echo. Um, you guys are putting out some great stuff. You're doing a good job, you know, getting your name out there, you know, going on tour and just posting away online is is the way to do it. And I know you guys have been at it for, for what, how long have you been around? You, you, you talked about 2012 uh, going to India, so, but you've been around. So the first album, I think it was 2011. 2011 yeah. 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 In 2011. Yeah. And the thing is I was still at school um, doing my master's. And um, so we did not push the band as much during that time. I think we started really like, you know, I don't want to say being more serious. We've always been serious, but maybe like, you know, putting the effort to really uh, do more shows and 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 getting the name out more mm -hmm. and and everything. So we've been to to be more active basically, and and that's hard mm -hmm. when you're you're stuck at school, as I was saying. Um, right, right. Whatever you know you're doing. Um, so so as soon as this was over, so it was a lot easier to just go out and play, and so. Yeah, we've been around since then, but um, to be more active, I think it's since we released Threads of Existence, which is the, the second album. So 2015, yeah, 16. 15, yeah. 16. Yeah. So you've got, you've got a, a video on the can that uh, you're working on getting yeah. out soon. And uh, have, you been, have you guys been working on new music during this time? Yes. Um, so. And you're in a recording studio, so I guess you can just... <laughs> record whatever yeah. right uh, we're kind of lucky for that um so so the thing is for musicians you know we already organize our own time so much you know if that that you learn that whenever you have a hole you need to fill it otherwise you'll get in trouble later um and i feel like so so it was the perfect time 
when you can actually like relax and, and sleep more and and really focus on being creative. Uh, of course, um, I won't say that um, inspiration just comes like this all the time, but um, we've been pretty good at, at using this time um, to, to work on, on new songs. Um, yeah, because you don't know, like, as soon as things get better, well, we would really like to be on the road. Um, and um, that's not going to be necessarily the time to compose at that time. So, so we, you know, we got started as soon as possible. And uh, it's actually pretty fun. There's, there's really some, some cool riffs that are, are starting to emerge. So now, now look, look, let me ask you this on your, on your contact website, um, there's a link to, to email you, Yannick, from your recording studio. Are you guys are you guys an independent uh, band right now? Yes, yes, we mm -hmm. are. So um, the majority, I'd say, of the um, uh, you know, well, pretty much all of the the band management is done, uh, you know, by Julie and I. So we're the ones that do uh, the all 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 of the work for it. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Well, like usually, like uh, like that tour that you guys went on the uh, the record labels for those bands like to put a band with those labels on those tours how did you guys get on that or how did you how did how did i mean and then you got invited to go play in india you know as an independent artist that that is amazing to me uh, well i guess the maybe the the uh, relationship with the iduvc i guess started uh, you know several well, several know. years back i mean to a little bit maybe if you want to yeah but i'm not that. sure i'm not sure it's it's what made the difference but i think you know it's it's a lot of pitching like you you send you send your videos you send your press kit and you have to contact and mm -hmm. i think for for us it was the best match that we could hope for um because edvt has the the growls mm -hmm. um a girl a girl singing you know so uh you also have the folk element um right so already like you have a lot of stuff that are common with us and and the violin you know so already three bands with violins like when do you see that you know so that was pretty cool um but there were a lot of elements that tire music to elevate and and of course they're like a, a thousand times more folk than we are um right. but but they're but, bands that match together but there's well their band know? that yeah that i think match well together and so so that was uh, that's a tour that we you know we contacted uh, their manager and uh, we yeah so we ended up you know we submitted their things and it worked out. Um, I think you, as an independent band, you just have to to do whatever um, your you know your manager would do or your your your, your own manager. Yeah, right. You just have to put a crap ton of of time. That's the thing, mm -hmm. and and just go for it and and send. A, I think it's it if you have good content and and. Yeah, you send it. Uh, as yeah, the music places. speaks for you, but at the same time, it, I mean, Julie's sending out a lot of emails to uh, to bands like she did for uh, Iduvitsi and that, and uh, Iduvitsi, right? <laughs> and uh, you know, and I mean, you you know, you see what's out there, right? I mean, who's touring and who needs an opening band? And it's just it's it's that legwork that is, I, I guess, constantly there, uh, you know, on our part when we're doing that work. So yeah, I mean, and I'm, I mean. Once in a while, you get you get lucky, and and this great, you know, sometimes great things like this happen, and that was a really great tour, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, you guys have top notch albums, like top notch produced albums. I mean, it helps that you, you know, have the recording studio and you can do that yourself, and you've got that knowledge, and and you say you have a master's degree, right? And, yeah, so I have a master's that I did uh, in viola, which is a big violin, and uh, I did one in opera after. And I was really okay. hoping that a lot of classes would transfer, but not so many. So it was actually oh. <laughs> a full-on full second master's. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be done. <laughs> so you were, tr but, you were transferring from, from Canada to Tennessee? No, it was it was the same university, but uh, it's just there's so many like stuff that is very a different program. for, for uh, opera because you have acting classes, ah. um, directing classes that okay. I got. So like if basically it's it's almost like how to put a play together or how to be an actor, which is a total different things from just being a musician. Yeah. Right. And then you have like diction. 
so you can sing in like four or five languages that you can't even speak. It's, <laughs> you can still, well, I mean, like you don't you don't necessarily know the language, but you know how to pronounce it. So that's gotcha. gonna be yeah, yeah. Speaking classes. You have a literature of opera that's not something that you learn as a string player. So there's there were so many classes that I kind of wish that you know I I I didn't realize how many were classes. <laughs> So it, it ended up being uh, quite quite something. I was finishing my first master's and doing undergrad classes of opera to make sure that I would not be behind in wow. my second master's. So that gives you an idea. It was insane. So that's why after this, we were like, okay, now band time. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's amazing. That's amazing. So when you're not when you're not doing Gone in April, um, I guess Yannick, you're running a recording studio, right? Well, uh, the yeah, so the, the yes, that's true. Um, my background is in uh, physics. I have a, an undergrad in engineering physics and a PhD wow. in physics. So a PhD. Uh, I have a PhD in physics. Yes, Dr. Yannick, the, yes. the yeah. physicist. Yeah. Nice. So, um, yeah. So I guess my Monday to Friday, nine to five, I, I work as a physicist in a medical scanner company. We make the uh, the kind of nuclear medicine scanners and, and stuff wow. like that. So. <laughs> so, so 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 as a as a as a physicist that likes death metal, how much do you like a legion? Oh, um, actually, I had the chance to listen to some of their songs uh, probably about three months ago. That uh, I don't know very much about the band, but I remember liking it very much, though. Uh, but yeah, no, they're they're an awesome band. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're they are an awesome band for sure. I, I interviewed them. Um, it was a year last year it was like last it was like actually maybe a couple days before i saw or no a month after i saw you guys actually okay i, I interviewed them in the backstage area <laughs> excuse me oh. excuse me sorry <laughs> thank you um yeah so but i i i just used my phone and i didn't take any extra light so the uh it's not the best quality interview and it's not as in depth as this one <laughs> that's been the great thing about this it's like you know like i interviewed them after the show they were tired they were sweaty you know they just kind of wanted to get in the van and go to the next place but here they were talking to me for a few minutes and it was cool but now here i'm talking to you guys for almost an hour and uh, but we're all comfortable, you know. There's we're sitting in air conditioned homes, yes, you know. So, um, that's amazing. That's amazing that you're you have a double master's and 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 you're a doctor. It just blows my mind. I just yeah, dropped so, out I mean, of online college. <laughs> well, the thing is, that's what keeps us really busy, also, right? So, like I was saying, like my kind of nine to five, Monday to Friday is that, and then you know, early, very early evening till very late at night, then I'm in the studio wow. uh, working and, and on weekends also, right? And we're we're managing Gone in April also at the same time. So it, it's a, a lot of hours per week, but when you love what you do, you don't feel like you're working, right? So yeah. that's that's the thing that's really cool. So to me, I love, I mean, the, the team that we have where, where I work, I feel like I go to work with my friends every, every day. Well, I don't have as many friends at work now with COVID going on, but I mean, right. you know, but I, nonetheless, in regular times, when people actually go to the factory, I feel like I'm going to see my friends every day, you know? And I mean, awesome. the work is super interesting. It's super exciting. And I mean, we build, you know, kind of like cancer finding machines, right? So it's it's really for a, a good, um, uh, you know, a good cause, if you want to call it a, yeah. you know, a good cause. It's, it's really... Cool, and of course, working in the studio and working on Gone in April stuff. I mean, it, it's just really, really amazing. So you don't feel the hours as much as if you were going to a job that you don't enjoy. So the, you don't tend to see the hours as much, I guess. Yeah. And and what do, what are you doing? Uh, uh, well, so for me, I really wanted to make sure I could live as a musician. I mean, it's so hard to make yeah. a living as a musician because it's not like the most, let's be honest, the most paying thing. And uh, you do have to go after your own work. Um, and it's never its never like you do one interview for a job and you have it for many years. I mean, unless, unless you're doing uh, orchestra. And, and even then, you need to audition for like a, a ton of orchestras before you usually get something. Uh, it's really, really, really hard to get. There's a ton of musicians that are trying to get those places. 
so huge competition and and there's so many awesome musicians and that's the thing so um so yeah i wanted to make sure i could actually work only in music so i that's why i did two instruments so if i'm not playing in symphonies or um yeah so mo mostly playing is playing in for, for I, I play for like three symphonies um but ne never full time for any so i kind of go a little bit everywhere it's fun i like it um i also can choose my gigs this way so uh, it's all contract so i can really go with you know what we do with the band mm -hmm. so symphony work i also take opera work so whenever you know i i get um i audition for an opera if i get the gig then it wherever it is um i had one in utah for like three months i think at some point it was awesome wow uh, made me discover utah <laughs> <laughs> maybe i should have started a, bl a blog like you <laughs> it's okay it's uh it was really really cool um so i loved it there but yeah so opera uh so doing some some performances in the opera doing some performance with the symphony um doing some guest use you know guest stuff for bands uh, recordings yeah i yeah i record for bands that come into studio as well that want some violin and compose for them record um and i teach so yeah that keeps me pretty busy and uh that keeps me uh not hungry <laughs> well how, how how is that all affected right now though uh let's be honest it's kind of tricky um the teaching i've been on zoom or Skype or even Messenger. So that my students have been really, really good with this. They've been working hard. It's not, um, it's not as easy, I think, when you're in front of a camera and you're like, and I'm like, okay, can you turn around and show me your thumb, you know, like uh -huh. <laughs> on the, on the bow and, and they're like seven years old. So they're like, you know, <laughs> and, and again, so they've been really patient. So um, that's been rough. I think for singers, it's been also a little bit um, harder. Um, but everybody's been really good with that. For symphonies, everything is canceled, so yeah. so it's definitely a hit. Um, it's just as it's just as in the metal shows. I mean, we we play in, in theaters, so there's no way that can happen right now. Um, right. Well, I mean, there's there's hope. Uh, <laughs> I think that's why it's a good time to write also, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. People have, uh, you know, are more home than usual, then this is the, the good time to... Uh, exactly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you have more time, you have less gig, it's the time to, to do what you can do. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, find the inspiration in a beautiful nature, because that's not, that's not closed, so <laughs> that's not cancelled. So yeah, so that's been, that's been about it. Well, that's, that's great. And so as an independent artist, I mean, you have a lot of freedom to basically do things how you want to do it. Um, ha have you been approached by many labels? And, but, and if so, would you, uh, would you think about it or, or you guys prefer to, to stay how you are? Yeah. So um, I think we're at the point now that we've started uh, looking. So until... And probably about a few months ago, we hadn't really started, uh, uh, you know, looking for a label or anything like that, you know, and I think the band's gotten more visibility also in the past yeah. uh, year. Uh, but I think we're at the point now that, uh, you know, we have started, uh, you know, reaching out to a label. So it is something that uh, we're, we're interested in. Uh, but until now, nothing's kept us from doing what we want, because, yeah. I mean, we take care of the majority of the uh, the management um, mm -hmm. and uh, we're able to do the music and the albums we want and the videos we want. And, you know, I think it, it would help probably for uh, some touring to have representation for that yeah. uh, also. But uh, we've just started kind of reaching out to, uh, uh, to you know, labels and uh, agencies a few months ago just to to kind of get started before we weren't doing that as much. So we're, uh, we're kind of like getting into that game right now. Yeah. Well, I think you guys would kill it on the European festival circuit. Yeah, it'd be that fun. It'd be, be really great to fun. go. Yeah. Like, yeah, that would be a dream. I mean, assuming that ever happens again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone say, everyone's saying next year, next year, next year. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, I mean, there's a, a friend of mine who's uh, kind of like a, a tour director. Um, for uh, some big bands in Europe. And actually one of the aspects that he mentioned that I, I hadn't really considered, he said, 
one of the reasons that a lot of the tours are getting canceled is because at least what he had heard was that um, the insurance companies don't want to cover insurance wise the artists that are going uh, overseas and doing these long oh, tours I didn't even think because about it's that. It, it's a lot of more risk on on their part so uh, yes I mean there there is uh, health risks and there's there's all sorts of, of issues with uh, with COVID and performances right now but there's also the insurance coverage uh, aspect of it which is uh, a high risk and that's what gets tricky you know I mean when uh, a band cannot get the insurance coverage they need to be able to do the tour, then that makes it even harder for them to do the tour, right? So there's a lot of uh, uh, additional aspects other than the health aspects that are a challenge right now, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I hope you guys stay safe and, uh, you know, do, do what you do. I'm, I'm about to take a big road trip myself. And, uh, you know, it seems like most people would think that that's a bad idea, but, I live in I live in the Houston, Texas area, and um, like where I'm going has less people <laughs> than where I'm at. <laughs> That's a good one. You know, so I'm going to be in the middle of nowhere with like in, with like around no hardly any people. I'm going to go to some parks and uh, I don't know. I, I've got my masks and my gloves and my sanitizer. I don't want to get I don't want to get this disease, but I also still want to be able to uh, show people what what it's like out there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I so think you're going to take your show on the road, basically. Is that it? Like, well, he's uh, always on the road. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess that's, that's the, true. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the that's the the goal of this is to be a travel show, um, mm -hmm. and there hasn't been much traveling. So, yeah. Uh, a travel yeah. show, a heavy metal travel show, a, a travel show with a heavy metal niche. So that's yeah. why I do the things where I go to the restaurants and uh, the unboxing stuff has has been just kind of random. But but I've been doing uh, more metal. It, it goes along with the travel, you know. It's like a mystery, like what what kinds of uh, you know. I got a, a box of CDs from an eBay guy the other day. I don't know if you guys saw that, but. I don't know. I, had, I hadn't had the chance to watch the video, but I saw that yeah. you, you got that. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to watch the whole lightsaber thing. That's what I need to get back. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did that earlier here. I'll, I'll grab it. It's right. It's right up here behind me. Ah. <laughs> so, so there's a company they're actually in the Houston area. So they're just South of Houston and I'm just North of Houston. Um, it's like an hour drive, but they're called ultra sabers. And I ordered this two months ago. They could have sent it two months ago. I, it, you know, they're on the other side of town. I could have went and picked it up, but it's it's a loom. It's like aluminum. Um, oh wow! It looks okay. nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 not like it's not like pieced together. It's it's solid. It's a solid oh. piece of aluminum. Oh wow! Okay. Um, I mean, there are parts inside and stuff, but you know, hit the button. <laughs> and oh, the nice. You can you can hear the speakers down here at the end of the hills. <laughs> red that is cool. so it was a mystery it was a mystery i had no idea what color i was gonna get really no i didn't know what color what design anything but they're they're um <laughs> this is so dorky but um <laughs> oh, they're they're actually a couple yeah they're actually a, are a couple of companies in the houston area that make these replica lightsabers so um there's another there's another person i'm gonna get with and i'm gonna get some from him and then i have some friends that have uh they have like a lightsaber dueling group where they where they battle each other with their lightsabers and uh <laughs> i'm gonna go down i'm gonna go down there and check that out so i'll make a little really nice. i'll make a little video of that when I went to Iceland, when I went to Iceland, um, I visited a group of Viking reenactment uh, mm -hmm. actors, and they were practicing their their battles in a in a parking garage, and oh, uh, in a parking garage, in a parking garage, yeah. And I, I was able to they put they dressed me up with the full chain mail and the helmet and everything, and and uh, I fought my my uh, friend Igik. He's in a black metal band called um, Nierst out there in Iceland it's called they're called Nierst and uh he he leads this Viking reenactment group and the guy's like six foot five you know solid dude you know just coming at he's just this big Icelandic Viking dude coming at me with a sword I'm just like ah and this is 
like on asphalt, right? I'm sorry? On asphalt? Asphalt. Asphalt, sorry. Asphalt, yeah, 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 asphalt, yeah. In, in a parking garage, I mean, like a regular parking garage. Yeah, concrete. that's scary. Like, at least, like, if you were on, on, on ground, you know, like, well, just, like, a grass. grass. Or something. Well, well, this, this is in Iceland, so they don't have a lot of that. <laughs> True. That's true. I didn't even think about that. But I'm, I'm just thinking whenever I was in Germany and they were doing live, um, we, we call that l'amvive in French. It's like, um, like, like basically. Like combat or something? No, yeah. l'amvive is like real, um, real blades, basically. You know, like yeah. when they do this, it's, it's, they're, they're usually like in, on the grass. And, and I feel yeah. like if you fall with your full armor and everything and then being hit like real hard, and <laughs> at least you're not getting the. The very hard concrete or asphalt under you, so and that feels that's that sounds pretty painful. So I'm glad you're still here to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, it was it was fine. It was fine. It was fine. It's on my it's on my YouTube. Um, if you go we dig gotta in check there, it out yes, then, yeah. yes. <laughs> if you on my YouTube, you'll you'll see it. It's like a 30 minute long video. You can just scroll through it. <laughs> that's awesome. Because because I hate editing. I hate editing. I hate it. And uh, I had to edit that together, and 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 then even then I didn't. I had to sound sync, which is even worse. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. I agree. I don't like the sound sync. Yeah, so I, I I don't have to do that anymore. I figured out how to. I actually bought the microphone for the camera I had, and then I bought another camera, and it has a microphone, and I can't find it. So on this trip, I'm just taking my iPhones with me. I'm just taking the iPhone. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. And I have uh, the Apple, uh, I have the AirPods, the, you know, the earbuds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I haven't tested this out, but I'm going to see how far I can get wearing those and still yeah. be able to, to talk. Yeah, so, I think the quality of smartphones has gotten, uh, you know, much better in the past few years. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I don't exactly. doubt the camera on, on the, the latest ones must be really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a $1,500 phone. It better have a damn good yeah. camera. <laughs> Fifteen hundred dollars, Chase. Yeah, man, they're expensive, dude. They're they're crazy, and they come out with a new one every year. And I'm like, <sighs> you keeping, up, keeping up with it. Yeah, but well, because <laughs> yeah, well, because I'm trying to I'm trying to use it. So. it. It's a lot more convenient to carry to carry that phone in my pocket than to carry you know yeah all the yeah. camera gear and the lights and I don't know, but I'm not taking the lightsaber with me. <laughs> I love it though. That's really cool. I saw that and I was like, yes. <laughs> but hey, I'm the probably the most geeky slash nerdy of the band. So well, no, I don't know. Aaron is really geeky too. So we we, we talk about our Dungeon and Dragon games and. <laughs> I don't play Dungeons and Dragons. That's that's like um, a friend of mine tried to trick me into playing it once, and so at that point on, I was like, I will never play Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, because he tried to trick you? Because he tried to trick me. Yeah. So I'm, well, like, I'm not doing you know, it. I tried to to get Yannick into playing uh, the Call of Tulu, and. Um, okay. And we did not really introduce him to it very well because we were like way too hardcore geeks and very <laughs> and just like so much in the game. And he's like, I'm really hungry, guys. Can I, is there anything to eat anywhere? <laughs> it started at about eight o'clock at night and finished at about four o'clock in the morning with nothing but like little like munchies and stuff like that. And I was like, I didn't know anyone in the group other than Julie, right? So it's, it's like, okay. Yeah, we did poorly. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> it was interesting. So the next time that happened, I just brought my laptop and worked on my laptop while they all had fun. So yeah, at least I was there for you know the yeah I guess the friend portion of it, but uh, they did their fun and I did my work. So. so your friend ruined it for you, and I I ruined it for Yannick. So he ruined it. Yeah, <laughs> I have to make up for that. Maybe maybe one day. I mean. I saw like community. They made it look pretty fun. I have some friends that play and uh, they're pretty hardcore. They, they took a, they took a TV, like a flat panel TV monitor and laid it down and turned it into, they put like a grid pattern over it mm -hmm. and turned it into their, their D and D board. Like their, their, uh, oh, wow. That's their a cool, grid. Like, cool idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like my friend sent me some videos. Like they, they have like, they have videos with like the ocean going and stuff like that. And Jeez. So that's a great pretty, idea though it's it's pretty yeah. impressive i'm I'm sure yeah. i mean i don't think they i don't think they came up with it so i'm sure you could probably see other people have done stuff like that 
if you wanted to get hardcore with your D and D sound effects. And yeah. That, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so before we got on, you showed me you had your violin with you. Oh, you yes. Still have it? You were saying you, you didn't you didn't have well you could not necessarily play videos so. So I thought, uh, I don't know if I'm still warmed up since we've been talking enough for an hour. <laughs> no. Well, you don't have to. You do, you do, you do. Yeah, yeah, you play. That'd be cool. Uh, here, you, I'll you know. <laughs> here, here, I'll make you. I'll make yeah. you full screen. Oh wow! Okay. So, so yeah. So we released that playthrough not long ago, and it was uh, one of our most folky songs. Uh, so I'll just play a part of it. So that's uh, a little bit of uh, rain. <laughs> There you go. That's unwarmed. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, cold. We say cold. Man, I'm telling you, where's my English today? Cold. That's terrible. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. Thank you so much for that. That was so cool. Well, a so little cool. snippet. <laughs> Thank you. And so uh, with that being said, um, you, know, you guys gone in April. You have your own website. You're on Facebook. You're on Instagram. Um, thank you for following me on on my account. Well, it's a pleasure. I'm actually super happy we are following you because <laughs> since you told me about Instagram, I think with Facebook there's something with the algorithm where we like we barely saw you know your yeah. posts come through, but on Instagram they were you know coming a lot more. So that's awesome. It's, it's a lot better. Yeah. So cool. Well, um, keep being safe. I look forward to to seeing that those new videos that you guys have in the can and hearing the new music that you have and um hopefully hopefully i can get up to tennessee or you guys can get down to texas yes. at one point yes. next year yeah. was it one of the warmest places i've been <laughs> yeah during the yeah, tour i was like oh my god it's so hot in here but it was yeah. awesome everybody was so nice i was well, like that's good what is it here everybody is so 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 nice i yeah <laughs> never had so many hugs i think after a show i was like wow <laughs> Well, you, really might want to, you might want to stay away from the hugs right now. <laughs> yeah, for, for a little while, yes. <laughs> yeah. We we need to reevaluate, you know, how how we hug people, you know, how we <laughs> greet people. <laughs> just just wave hello. <laughs> or bring the lightsaber, right? You just kind of yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just touch so we just cool touch sabers right there. We just touch sabers. Tink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome well, thank guys. you so much for having us. That was a really real pleasure. So we'll we'll continue following your adventures, and uh, yeah, enjoy your trip and uh, yeah. stay safe. But we look forward to seeing the footage from uh, from that with your fancy iPhone and all. <laughs> <laughs> when are you leaving? When are you going? I'm I'm leaving on Sunday. I'm leaving oh, on Sunday, okay. and I'm going to be gone for almost two weeks. Wow. And and. Okay. You know, we talked about our jobs, but what what job allows you to to travel so much? Uh, I just have plenty of vacation time. Ooh, that's awesome. So, so I've yeah, I've been with my company um, on the twenty third. Will be eighteen years. Oh wow, wow. nice. So, so I, I'm able, and then uh, you know, I was supposed to go to to Germany. I was supposed to go to Wacken Open Air, mm -hmm. and uh, that got canceled. And earlier, earlier this year, I was supposed to go to Los Angeles. I was going to go to Disneyland, and um, I got canceled too. I guess <laughs> I, I got canceled, and I was supposed to go to Fulterra Assault in Southern Illinois. That's, that's where I saw Summoner Circle last year. Yeah, mm -hmm. that got canceled. So um, I'm just able to get a lot of vacation time, and uh, I can use it. Well, that's neat. So it's good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we look forward to seeing the video footage from, yeah, uh, from your, uh, your two-week vacation. I'm gonna I'm gonna post videos every day. So awesome! Yep, we're gonna follow you every day. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you for having us. Awesome! I, I look forward to seeing you guys again. I'll uh, cool, man. Talk thank to you. Soon. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. All right, that was Julie and Yannick from.
gone in April. Super nice people. Um, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. Definitely check them out. They have, uh, they don't, they, here, you know what? They're still watching, but I'm going to go ahead and show you their merch store uh, real quick before they, they've already said goodbye, but here's their merch store. So they've got some cool t-shirts some beanies. You can buy the records. They've got bundles and you can listen to their music on Spotify, Apple music, Amazon. They're doing this. They're, they're doing this all themselves and they're doing a great job. They're killing it. They're killing it. So check them out. And uh, yeah, that's it for this episode, everybody. Thank you for watching. And uh, starting on Sunday, I'm going to start making some road trip videos. So watch out for that. I guess I'm going to post them when I get to hotels and get Wi-Fi and stuff. So until then, you have been epic.